live. <laughs> Good morning. How is everybody this morning? It's September 28th. How are you? Good. I'm, I'm, still, Bye. I'm still sleepy. Uh, I had a late night. Anyway, uh, good morning everybody. Today we're going to have um, a short, a short gospel reading, but uh, we're going to teach. We're going to teach today about one um, um, nice practice, Catholic practice, that uh, that I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure plenty of people would know about. So it's a very nice thing to uh, to uh, listen to. Oh, hi, Tiki. Good evening there. It's morning here. Uh, and Vic, Vic Culliano, how are you? Okay, let's start with the gospel today. Herod the Tetrarch heard about what was happening. And he was greatly perplexed because some were saying, John has been raised from the dead. Others were saying, Elijah has appeared. Still others, one of the ancient prophets has arisen. But Herod said, John, I beheaded. Who then is this whom I hear such things? And he kept trying to see him. So Herod Antipas was the, uh, the king of uh, uh, the Jews of the Jewish community at that time. And he was he was so intrigued by uh, by Jesus and wanted to wanted to see him. He wanted to to find out who this Jesus was that everybody has been raving about all over uh, uh, Judea, all over uh, Israel. You see, who is this Jesus that everybody is is raving about? He wanted to see him desperately. You see, plenty of people wanted to see Jesus. There are so many uh, uh, stories in the, in the Gospels where um, the desire of people to see Jesus has been recounted and has been told. Uh, from the very beginning, from his very birth, Magi from the East wanted to see Jesus, right? And they, uh, they took uh, pains to travel from wherever they were, uh, and in their home countries in order to follow that star, right? To follow that star that led them to the birthplace of Jesus in Bethlehem. Simeon, Simeon, the, 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 um, the old man there in the uh, presentation story of the temple, right? When he saw Jesus, when Mary and uh, Joseph uh, brought Jesus, what, what did he say? He said, Lord, now you can make your servant Go in peace, die in peace, because my eyes have seen the salvation of Israel. Right? So he, he has longed to see uh, the Savior. And he was so sure that this one that was being uh, presented at the temple at that time with, uh, with Mary and Joseph was the Savior of the world. So he praised God and he thanked God for that opportunity to... Uh, be able to see the uh, salvation of the world. Then you have the story of, uh, of uh, Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, that short guy. See in the gospel, who had, to, who had to climb a tree. Who had to climb a tree in order to uh, see Jesus, right? And when Jesus was passing by, you know, he, he thought, oh, I'll go right, I'll go ahead of everybody there, go ahead of the crowd, climb a tree so I can see Jesus better. And when Jesus saw him, he said, Hey, Zacchaeus, come down from there, for I shall dine in your house today. And then you have the story of Nicodemus and, uh, and um, you know, so, so many other people who wanted to see Jesus. Who wanted to see Jesus. And, you know, Herod was one of them. Herod was one of them who wanted to see Jesus. But you see, why is it that Jesus entertained and accommodated the other people, the other people who wanted to see him, but he did not favor the desire of Herod. Why is it that Herod was never given the opportunity to interact with Jesus? So much so that 
when Herod actually finally met Jesus, okay, when he was presented to him before he was crucified, Jesus did not say a word to him. Jesus did not talk to him. Jesus perhaps did not even, in the least, even look at him. Okay? He did not give Herod the privilege and the good fortune of interacting with him. Why was that? We ask ourselves, why, why did that happen to Herod? And why, were, why was Jesus like that to Herod? The, 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 the reason, yeah, Joe. He was unworthy? Well, we don't know about that. Yeah. But maybe 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 I, I would I would uh, venture a guess and say that maybe it's because Herod did not really want to see see and get to know Jesus the way that the other people really did wanted uh, want to know Jesus, right? Seeing Jesus here, see, is is uh, is the same as uh, knowing Jesus, wanting to know Jesus. Herod wanted to see Jesus for the spectacle of it. Okay? Because he knew, he, he was hearing that he was a miracle worker. Because he was hearing that, oh, uh, this Jesus has been, uh, has been performing magic. Okay? Uh, curing the sick, like what we uh, uh, heard in the past days. Curing the sick, raising the dead. Oh, wow. You see, this guy is a, is a miracle worker. So Herod wanted to see Jesus out of the curiosity of the spectacle that he has been hearing about, that Jesus was working. Whereas the other people wanted to see Jesus because they genuinely wanted to know Jesus, to get to know Jesus and have an intimate relationship with Jesus. So that's the big difference. That's the big difference. So... <clears throat> Now, you and I, you and I nowadays, okay? and before, okay, before we go there, let, let me just start, uh, uh, read here. I, I, I recall what Jesus told his apostles. Okay? Uh, blessed are you, okay? blessed are you because many prophets and kings wanted to see what you see and did not see it. Or hear what you hear but did not hear it. Okay? So Jesus was praising the apostles and was telling them that uh, they're so blessed for having that opportunity to be very close to Jesus. Now, you know what? Uh, you and I and all of us, all Catholics today, have that very blessed opportunity that we see and hear the Jesus who many prophets and kings did not see nor hear. Okay? And you know where? We can see Jesus. Where, Joe? Holy Eucharist. In the Holy Eucharist. Very good. Yeah, in the Holy Eucharist. And, and, and uh, in all of our churches, eh? practically in all of our churches, we have our Jesus waiting for us. Where? Where is Jesus waiting for us? In the... Oh, in the Adoration Chapel, that's true, Chevelle, in the Adoration Chapel, because that is where our Lord is exposed, right, in the monstrance, in the Blessed Sacrament. But, but for those who do not have Adoration Chapels, because that's not common everywhere, at least Jesus is waiting where? In the tabernacle. In the tabernacle. See? In the tabernacle. And we are very sure that as long as we see that lamp, in the inside the church that's lit the the lit lamp normally it's a uh, it's close to the tabernacle it's some we know that jesus will should be somewhere there wherever that lamp is lit see jesus has been waiting for us in the tabernacle see for the last 2000 years okay since the last 2,000 years, since the first time that he inaugurated the Holy Eucharist, he has been there waiting for us in the tabernacle. You see the difference, the, the situation has now been reversed. Whereas before, people were wanting to see Jesus and was trying to look for an opportunity to find Jesus and, and, and be with Jesus. Nowadays, you know what? It's the reverse. 
Jesus is the one now who's waiting, waiting in the tabernacles. And for the most part, Jesus waits a whole day. And you know what? Many times, He is alone. He is alone. Nobody is there at the tabernacles. Nobody is there to see Him. For the most part of the day, people are so busy, you know, off with their work, doing their school, or uh, going about doing their usual business of the day, that Jesus gets left alone in the tabernacles. The tabernacles of the churches all over the world. Could you just imagine how lonely that could be? Imagine if you if you got left behind here at home a whole day. You were alone. Huh? <laughs> Could you imagine if that were your situation? That you were alone at home for a whole day? How you know, I, I, I think, I think uh, anybody left in that situation would long for company, right? Especially, especially <coughs> if you long for the company of the people you love. If you long for the company of those, of those that you died for, of those that you have extended uh, uh, mercy to. Of those people who you have laid down your life for, right? I would like to think it would be nice to get a visit from these people, right? And, and, and I'm referring to people like us because we are the ones that Jesus Christ loves. We are the ones that Jesus Christ died for. We are the ones that Jesus Christ longs for, to be with, to be intimately uh, uh, associated with so and that is why in the church we have that very very nice tradition and very nice practice which is called the visit to the blessed sacrament the visit to the blessed sacrament that's what we do every day right when we go to mass right after mass we go to the adoration chapel and there we stay with our Lord for uh, some moments, some moments of the day, <laughs> some moments of the morning. Chavelle says for 2,000 minutes. <laughs> for, for her, it's a long time. Eh? But we are there in order to visit our Lord, to visit Jesus. Eh? To visit Jesus who has been waiting for us uh, a whole day for us to come back, eh? to come back and visit him again. See, it's called a visit to the Blessed Sacrament, folks. And, and there are two ways to do this. Okay, so let, let's, let's, uh, let's review uh, this particular practice of the visit to the Blessed Sacrament. There are two ways to do this. Oh, wait a minute. There are two forms, the long and the short, right? And uh, let's review what it is. The visit to the Blessed Sacrament, that practice consists in praying, Our Father, Hail Mary, and Glory Be. Plus that invocation, uh, Adoremos in Eternum Santissimum Sacramentum. Okay? In English, it means, May the Most Blessed Sacrament be adored forever. Okay? May the Most Blessed Sacrament be adored forever. And it is the, invo the uh, aspiration that you repeat in between the Our, F the Our Father, Hail Mary, Glory Be, Our Father, Hail Mary, Glory Be. Right? Uh, if you were in front of the tabernacle where our Lord is not exposed, He's inside the tabernacle. You do the short form of the visit where you repeat the Our Father, the Hail Mary, and the Glory Be three times. And in between that, the, the uh, prayer, uh, May the Most Blessed Sacrament be adored forever. And at the end of the three sets, there is that beautiful prayer called the Spiritual Communion. See? I wish, Lord, to receive you with the purity, humility, and devotion with which your most holy mother received you 
with the spirit and fervor of the saints. See? A beautiful expression of <clears throat> the desire to receive Jesus physically. See? Uh, uh, first spiritually through that prayer, okay? and then expressing the desire to also receive our Lord physically in Holy Communion. Now, but if you were in front of a monstrance where our Lord is exposed <clears throat> openly, physically, then, then it is advised that we pray the longer form of the visit to the Blessed Sacrament, where instead of saying three sets of the Our Father, Hail Mary, and Glory Be, we do six sets. See? It's just a more, a more uh, extended uh, kind of visit. Okay? So those are the, uh, the two forms of uh, that particular practice um, of the visit to the Blessed Sacrament. And then, you know, besides that kind of a prayer, that kind of a formulation um, of a visit, it is always very nice to make it a habit to spend a few minutes of our day, if we can, okay? if we can, those who have the capability of doing that every day, spend a few moments visiting our Lord uh, in silent prayer and, and just talk to him. Just talk to him like, like you were making a visit to a friend. See? What do you talk about when you visit a friend? Well, you know, just like over this weekend, I had uh, a few uh, high school classmates come uh, visit us here in Modesto. We had a reunion. Some of them I haven't seen for the last uh, 40 years. Okay. Uh, that's how old I am. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, and, and uh, well, so it was a visit that was full of just recollections of old stories and uh, how we have been, how we were 40 years ago and all of our uh, jokes and all of the uh, things we used to tease each other with and uh, all of those, uh, you know what, it's, what it is to have a high school reunion or a reunion between high school friends. It was like that, full of so many stories, right? We had 40 years worth of telling each other stories. Well, you know, you don't have to make our Lord wait for 40 years. A whole day's affair is enough material to feed a few minutes of a visit to our Jesus who waits for you and I in the tabernacle. He waits for you and me in the tabernacle every day. Every day. Let us try to make it a point to... Uh, to squeeze in a few minutes of our very busy schedule every day to go and make a visit to the Blessed Sacrament. Let's make it a habit. It's a nice, nice habit, folks, that we can, uh, can put in that schedule. I'd like to think, no matter how busy we are, there will always be an opportunity, a chance for us to do a visit to the Blessed Sacrament. And then you know what? If you really, really cannot uh, stop by and make that visit, if you ever, ever pass by a church, imagine that our Lord is in that tabernacle waiting for you. And you can always say hi to Jesus in that tabernacle as you pass along that road on the way to somewhere, to work or wherever you're going. Always say hi to Jesus in that tabernacle and you would have gladdened his heart and you would have at least reminded him that he is in your mind every day. Okay, that's it for us, folks. We're going to Mass. Have a good day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.